If you really want to understand how a boat is going to last over the long haul, you've got to have a deep understanding of how it's built. Now, we came here to Oconto, Wisconsin to test this Cruisers 259. Let's go visit the plant and see exactly how this boat is put together. We wanted to get you a really in-depth, close-up look at how these boats are built, so we came to Cruiser's factory. Now, John, one thing I noticed today is when you're swinging, say, the seat back, back and forth, yeah. it's solid as a rock, and now we can see how. Will you show me why that is? Yeah, absolutely. Lenny, the reason our hinges and, and, and uh, any moving parts uh, seem solid is because we take the time to put quarter-inch aluminum backup plate into the lamination schedule, and uh, those are specifically mounted in places where we're going to attach to the fiberglass part with hinges uh, or seat bases, cleats, it's throughout the whole boat. Now I want to move on and show you some of the features of this boat, but we just can't close this engine room hatch yet. First off, look at the step with a non-skid. That's nice. Most boats this size, you won't find that. Now let's take a look at how cruisers set up the bilge pump. I love this. Pump, float switch, backup float switch. Look, we all know those float switches fail. And when's the last time you saw a boat of this size with a backup switch? Plus, they're mounted on nice, solid aluminum plates. Let's take a peek at one of the features that will interest a much broader audience. When you close down this engine box, you have a nice comfy seat that flips back and turns into a lounger. Hey, the lounger is great when people are swimming off the platform and everything, but I like the seat facing forward, and here's why. I can just reach right over here to get my cold drinks out of the cooler. And there's even a sink if I want to use it. The helm layout is all new this year. You have a custom cruiser's wheel, and yes, it's a tilt. Chart plotter in the center, gauges on the sides, and this Diamante finish. Very nice. Now here is something really unusual for a boat of this size and type. The head is not inside the cabin. It's located in the passenger's console, and it's accessed from out here. That's a real advantage, because guess what? The cabin won't get all stunk up when the head gets a little icky. But this setup could really be improved if a rubber bumper were added over here so the door didn't hit the step. The anchor locker design on this boat is really interesting. Pop it open and you'll find a self-deploying ladder. Now if you're the kind of person that tends to beach the boat and go swimming or picnicking, that's awesome. But if you're the kind of person that tends to anchor out in open water often, well that could get in the way. It's an interesting trade-off. Of course, you'll find many of these features on the 258, the sister ship to the 259, but that boat's a bow rider. The biggest difference? This boat has a cabin. Come on down, check it out. For a 25-footer, this is a pretty roomy cabin. And thank you, cruisers, for giving us a real table instead of a piece of plastic. You can swivel it like this, or remove the table and turn it into one big berth. Here's another example of how cruisers builds their small boats just like their yachts. Here's a high water bilge alarm right in the cabin. Now we ran this boat with this honking big Volvo Penta V8. And I tell you what, top end broke 53 miles an hour. We cruised at over 40. Now one of the real performance highlights on this boat is the way it handles. Notice the notches and the chime. They really help the hull grab and dig in when you turn. It's just awesome at the wheel.